Today I'm going to talk about uh, a tough subject, and that's divorce. And we're also going to be going over the uh, Cinco, how to how to fish a Cinco, and uh, your different options in choosing a Cinco. So, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you uh, bless us today, Lord God. Keep us safe on the water, Lord, and I pray that you bless all marriages. Help us to understand what you're trying to tell us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In this world, Holy Spirit, take control. Lead me all of my days, Lord, as you want to go. Fate memories to pray and take the pain out. Father, wash it all away. Follow me, Holy Spirit. Take my heart, lead me every day. The Bible says that uh, a man should leave his father and his mother and be united with his wife and the two flesh will come together and become one and whatever God has brought together let no man ever separate and we know that uh, God hates divorce so those two things alone should tell us we can't just leave a marriage because uh, I'm being annoyed by the other person or I'm getting bored So if I'm leaving if I'm leaving my marriage because I'm getting bored and My wife has not committed adultery against me and I decided to go and get remarried and I decide hey, you know what because we're Christians We're not going to have sex until we get married because we're a Christian. Well, in spiritual law, see, I'm still bound to my ex-wife. 
And that's the way God sees it. You know, the Bible talks about how, you know, sleeping with a prostitute will bring poverty into your life, okay? That could be a, a, a revelation for someone. But it also says sleeping with another man's wife will, will cost you your life. And the Bible also says in another scripture that uh, the man who lays down with another man's wife, that sin will not go unpunished. We're not, we're not getting away with things. We're, we're not getting away with these things. You know, and, and this, is, this is some serious stuff here. And I, I believe this is why it's one of the Ten Commandments, is that thou shall not commit adultery. Be why? Because we're talking about life and death here. What I'm, what I'm fishing today so the, is a Cinco. All right? And, and what a Cinco is, basically, is a worm that looks something like that. It's just a chunk kind of worm. It's something that uh, doesn't have a tail on it. Okay, see how this is, this has those square ends. You know, this isn't a worm, but that's what I'm saying. It doesn't have one of those squiggly tails on it like that. And uh, we're talking about the good old wacky rig. This is, this is what I'm throwing today, which basically means I'm just, I'm just hooking it in the middle of the worm. And it's going to fall like that. And it's those little subtle movements that just drive the bass nuts, you know. Um, I like to use just a little bit. That's a, that's a, I believe that's a 16th ounce little weight, weighted jig hook, weighted jig hook. And uh, that makes it fall a little bit faster. So it's going to get a little bit more of a bend when it's falling and, and the ends are wiggling. And uh, just just gets you down into the strike zone a little bit quicker. I, I think it falls, you know, slow enough as it is you know, with weighted. Um, you know, it's it's not dropping fast. A lot of people think that uh, cinco fishing is basically fishing for dummies. You know, throw a worm on like that, just chuck it out there, um, and just hold on to your rod and get ready because the, the bass are just going to try to rip the rod right out of your hands. Well, if it was if it was that easy, why aren't we all on the Bassmaster Tour? So, of course, the next question is, when is it okay to get divorced? Well, the Bible says, when a woman is married to her man, they're, they're, they're bound together for as long as she is bound to her husband for as long as he lives but if he dies then she's free to marry anybody that she'd like to but he must belong to the Lord and then the only other reason that it gives is in Matthew and it says uh, the, the only other reason for getting divorced is sexual immorality anything other than that you're committing adultery now of course we have to throw abuse in now we have to be careful on that because a lot of people like to lie to themselves and come up, oh, he is emotionally, you know, you know, giving my, myself an excuse to leave just because um, I'm not getting everything that I want. Uh, th that's not an excuse. We're talking about physical abuse, something, something terrible. Uh, you're, you're not bound there. And here's another area where you're not bound. And that is if you're married to an unbeliever and they don't want to be with you. We don't want to just give up on somebody, you know? We're, we're married to a non-believer. I mean, I, I think about, you know, there's all kinds of stories about women who go to church for long periods of time all by themselves and their, their husband's been out, was out, was out all weekend drinking you know, but they come to church and they're praying for him and they just hanging on. They're just hanging on, you know, hoping that someday he'll turn around. I mean, that's the right thing to do. If the husband was to come to the wife, the, the church going wife, <clears throat> and say, you know what? I don't want to be with you anymore. I'm sick and tired of you going to church all the time. And you're always nagging me about it. 
and I'm done. I want a divorce. The Bible says you're free to go on that. So I, I want I want a little bit of bow in my line. And what I'm doing, I'm going to be able to feel, I'm going to be able to feel a little bite in my pole. It's going to feel something like that. As I have that bow in the line, there's, there's a little bit of bow. When a fish goes to bite it, or if he's sucked it into his mouth and is starting to swim away, my line will suddenly go straight. All right. There's a lot of times that you're getting subtle bites and you don't even know it. Um, like, a, you know, they're not always going to rip the pole right out of your hands. So I also watch my line as it's entering into the water. Okay. That will start moving. If I see that line as it's entering into the water and it's moving side to side for like no reason, I got a fish on um, if I cast, say I cast over here, and I'm kind of aimlessly looking around, and uh, you know, and all of a sudden I notice, wait a minute, my line's over here. I cast over here. Th th this will happen to you, trust me. All of a sudden my line's over here, there's a fish on that. There's different ways of setting hooks, okay? When we're, when we're, when we're using crankbaits and jerkbaits, they, they do you do kind of a kind of a sweep right this okay because it's coming down like here and, and I, I want the hook to go right up into the top of the of the mouth that's where it's, it's, it's good solid there's like some cartilage there or something that the hook can really get set in all right I'm gonna I'm gonna tend to do a up like that I, I'm gonna want to pull her up and kind of snap there again especially when when the bites are getting very very subtle when I can barely tell that they're even biting on it and I'm not quite sure if there's a fish on it or not it seems like my line is moving a little bit I don't know boom I just give it a little snap like that I got a nice brand new hook on there that tip is just as sharp as it can possibly possibly be that little snap gonna pop right in there man